So I really want to make a dress for my cousin's wedding, which is in a week and a half. I probably don't have time, but I really want to make one. I have this gorgeous linen that I was gifted from Isoli Linen. So they actually were going to send me three meters, but one of the packages got lost in the mail. So they sent me another one and then the lost package ended up showing up. So now I have six meters. So I have a ton of fabric. So I think it would be perfect to make a gorgeous gown, kind of House of CV inspired. So my plan is to make something like this, a bustier style dress with pleated cups, a really full circle skirt with a tear and a cheeky little thigh high slit. I definitely want it to be fully boned and I bought some bra foam and I have underwires. So I do have everything I need. The only thing I don't have is time. <laughs> so we'll see how far we get. I'm using one of my favorite patterns for the bodice of this dress. It's the Vicky Sews Teresa dress. I've used this pattern probably six or seven times and I used it for a couple thrift flips in a previous video, which I'll link above here. I'm only making a slight modification to the top cup of the pattern for this dress and I'm making foam cups to line it and adding a pleated overlay to the cups as well. The only other change I made to this pattern was to add a shirt back panel. And to do that, I just added two inches to my back bodice pieces. And that will give me enough room to shirt and make it a little more comfy. Here are all my pieces cut out and I also cut out lining from a white linen cotton I had. Okay, I have all my pieces cut out, but now I'm just looking up how to make a circle skirt. I'm gonna use the by hand London calculator, which makes it super easy. You just put in your waist measurement and then it will give you your radius and length and show you like a cutting layout. I'm gonna make it in paper first because I wanna add a slit to the front and then I'm going to sew these pieces together. I think the bodice should go pretty fast, but yeah, that is where we're at. So we didn't do any sewing last night, so all my pieces are still here. But I drafted a circle skirt. This is a four and a half inch radius, and then the length I put at 24 inches. So I got right to cutting out the skirt. I was kind of toying with the idea of doing a double circle skirt, so like a gathered circle skirt, but I wasn't sure as that seemed like it'd be a lot of fabric. It is very flowy. Apparently this is half of my skirt check this again. Should I do two? That's gonna be a lot of ruffle on the bottom if we do two. I don't know. I wanna do a slit in the middle of the skirt, so I'm just gonna hold this up and mark where I want the slit. Once I had that measurement, I used that to transfer it to the paper pattern as that skirt piece was the back one. And then I folded my paper pattern piece and cut my two pieces out, making sure to add seam allowance. And as you can tell, I just went with a single circle skirt instead of the double one. So I have three skirt pieces, right front, left front, my half circle back skirt. Now I'm gonna measure all of these hems to see how long the circumference of my entire dress is. And then I'm going to double that number and that will be the width of my ruffle. It's gonna be so long. And I need to figure out how long I want it. It's a lot of math. 23. That's a lot of length. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough for a ruffle. Let's do some math. 23 times 4. Yes, I can't multiply. 22. Please don't make fun of me for my non-existent math skills. What can I say? I really hated Kumon as a child, but I had to do even more math. I wasn't sure how tall I could make the tiers because I only had a limited amount of fabric left. So I figured out I could split my fabric in four horizontally and that would give me 480 inches. I won't show the cutting of all that because that's boring. So moving on to the cups. I forgot to film sewing the foam cups together, but I did that. And then I put them on my dress form and started pleating the fabric over top. Okay, I'm generally happy with how that's looking. I think I'm gonna steam it mark the pleats, I guess, and take it off and then cut a second piece so that they match more or less. I cut the fabric out with a one centimeter seam allowance and then I traced out the pattern piece on another piece of fabric. I actually did this wrong the first time. The fabric should be wrong side up, so I recut this piece after. Then I folded all the pleats and pressed them really well for the other cup. 
and then place the foam cup right sides together with the fabric and sewed it with an eighth inch seam allowance at the top edge, then flipped it back to the right side and basted it along the bottom edge. Good girl. <laughs> We're heading to the cottage tonight. So I'm packing up my machine and all of my pieces. I've surged all my edges and I'm hoping that I can get like a solid chunk done up there. It's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. So if I can get someone to watch the kids, then I can hopefully finish the dress. Anyways, I gotta go pack all the kids stuff and get out of here. See you at the cottage. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. So we just got back from the cottage today and I got probably 40 minutes of sewing in. I was hoping to get like a full day of sewing by the lake and relaxing, but I guess I temporarily forgot that I have a baby and a four-year-old, so that did not happen. So all I did was I got the bodice and the lining part of it, not even the whole thing sewn together. Right now I'm going to sure these back pieces. I'm gonna do a lining and an outside piece. I'm also gonna cut these in half so I can have a center back zip. And then I'm going to attach these to the main and the lining of the bodice. And I have my cousins coming to visit tomorrow. So I'm gonna to try to sew as much as possible right now. Wish me luck. This is why you should not sew at night. I didn't mark what sides of my piece were which because it's slightly angled on one side. And I shirred both of these pieces so that they're the same, like I don't have mirrored images of each other, which is really annoying because shirring is not the most fun. For now, I'm just gonna attach the shirred main pieces to my bodice and then redo one side. A few moments later. <sighs> I've now shirred three of the same pieces. And now I have to do a fourth because I didn't do it on the right side. On the bright side, I have figured out how to shirr really fast. Uh, what, Snow White? No, the frosty one is it. Oh, frozen. frozen. My kids are watching TV with my mom, so I'm sneaking away to do this. I sewed one cup on last night, but that's all I could manage to do because it took me a long time to put in the boning and the shirring panels. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. I didn't want to film this last night because I didn't really know how it was gonna go. I wanted to like have a run at it without having to film. <laughs> So now that I know what to do, I'm gonna show you. This is the pleated cup with the foam inside that I've covered the seams with bias tape. Now I'm just going to finish the edge with serging and also add a bias tape channel for the underwire before sewing it to the bodice. I'm gonna hand baste the cup in because I'm gonna top stitch it on and this is all finished. This is how the bodice was looking once the cups were inserted. I went super slow with the top stitching so it was nice and neat. The fit was looking so, so good. I was getting so excited and then it was time to attach the skirt. I sewed the pieces together at the side seams, leaving the center back open and top stitched all around the slit. Then it was time to level off the skirt and I did this in my kitchen because the dress was so big at this point. Hey, why is there a noodle on here? Did you just drop a noodle on here? 
I just dropped a noodle on your breath. Yeah, I just found one. Really? Yeah, I don't oh, know how. How do you do that? I have no idea. After the noodle removal, I took one half of the bottom tier and I gathered it and sewed it to the bottom of the skirt. Camera is so low. Okay, I got one of the tiered panels on and I love it, I love the length. So I just have to do the other side. The hemline is so long that I have to gather over 200 inches of fabric for the bottom tier. So I have 150 left for the other side, but this is how it's looking and I'm so excited. It's a swishy dream. This week has been absolutely jam-packed with stuff to do and the wedding is now in two days and I'm still not done my dress, but we have family visiting and they have little kids so it's been just like chaos in our house so they're all actually at the pool and i'm home with the baby who's napping so i'm going to try to get this dress done and if i want to add sleeves this is the time to do it i also need to make three bow ties for my two boys and my husband so we're going to try to get this done right now <laughs> Ready? Because it's time for the reveal. One of my favorite YouTubers, Rachel Maxi, always does a wrap up at the end of her videos and I really like that format. So I'm gonna do my own little wrap up. So overall, I really love how this dress turned out. It actually exceeded my expectations. I am in love with it and it was so much fun to wear. It was the perfect summer wedding guest dress. I really like how the pleated cups turned out. I had some problems with the skirt, which I actually didn't show in the video, but it ended up quite a bit bigger than it was supposed to, I think. I'm not really sure what happened there, but I was rushing quite a bit through this dress as I was on quite the time crunch. I also did not show making the sleeves in the video because I was literally making these the night before the wedding as well as the bow ties. So it was go, go, go like all night that night. And I was still hand sewing them on in the morning, but they're basically just spiral flounces that I freehand and then I just hand sewed them to the inside of the dress. It's not the cleanest finish, but I didn't know what type of sleeve that I was gonna do starting from the beginning. So the bodice was already fully finished by the time I got around to making the sleeves. The skirt is my favorite part. I am not really a super feminine or girly girl, but I don't know. This dress maybe converted me because I loved wearing a circle skirt. It was so fun to twirl in. As you can see from those previous clips, I didn't have any clips of me at the wedding where I wasn't twirling. So if that tells you anything. I think the only thing that I would change or maybe not even change, it's a very, very nitpicky thing, but this bodice pattern does not have a side seam and it doesn't line up with the skirt seams, which honestly, it's completely unnoticeable in a printed fabric like this, but if it was a solid, you might notice. But at the same time, I feel like I wouldn't even care. I really have no complaints about this dress. I wouldn't say that anything went badly or was too difficult. I just think this dress is great and I hope I have another opportunity to wear it because it is so pretty. If you have any questions about how I made the dress, definitely leave me a comment below. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.